And a good day to you, Explorer Nation. John Linsky here with another edition of Looking Back with Linsky, the Christmas edition, end of the year edition. And what better person to have than the president of Columbus High School to sum up this amazing year, President Tom Cruzak. Tom, thanks for joining me today. John, it's great to be with you here today. It's just, it's been an amazing couple of weeks and it's been an amazing couple of years. So it's great to be with you today. Yeah, amazing two and a half weeks, amazing two and a half years. So why don't we start with the the recent phenomenal events of the last uh, couple of weeks here and and walk us through, Tom, ex- the, the highs and lows, the anticipations, the excitements, the surprises of what's unfolded the last couple of weeks here at Columbus High School. And I guess we can start with um, C.J. Henderson. Absolutely. So, you know, the uh, ribbon cutting that we did for the Henderson Family Athletic Training Center was just so much fun. It was a glorious day outside. We had so many of our guys were here. So many of our alums and board members came as well. You know, CJ and his family were here and it was just it was a fun day. It was just a fun day. Um, you know, and, and I knew what was coming down the road. Um, we couldn't really talk about it that day, but it was just it was a fun day. We had uh, lunch at the uh, brother um, Eugene Plaza as well. And so it really was just it was a great day. And then it led to where we were going to go from there. And that's the the exciting thing, John, I think, you know, as, as we we moved on to the next stage, which was, of course, the the amazing Marcus Lamona's gift. You know, so as you just said, you knew you knew the CJ thing was coming and, and he's a great young man. His brother's a great young man, great family. And it's always nice when explorers give back to the school that did so much for them. And so we appreciate what a young man like CJ did. And then from the 90s, Marcus Lamonis stepped up in ways that nobody could ever see, no one could ever imagine. So why don't you take us behind the scenes now that it's all all happened and, and tell us how it unfolded, Tom. So my conversations with Marcus, you know, I, I talk to him periodically, you know, and I always enjoy conversations with him. I always learn something. Um, but the conversations on this particular gift happened very quickly. It started about four weeks ago when he called kind of out of the blue. <clears throat> and I know he'd been having some some conversations with, um, with you know, just in thinking about it. Uh, but he called me about four weeks ago and he asked about the teachers and the staff. And it was a great conversation because he wanted to know, you know, do, do faculty and staff stay here? Do they leave us? You know, what are the challenging issues that they face? You know, how can we help them more? You could tell his his heart was in wanting to help out the faculty and staff. And so we just had a lot of conversations. You know, he wanted to know numbers. So I, I was giving him, you know, a bunch of numbers. And then the phone calls started happening fairly quickly thereafter. Um, and then he wanted to know more about the things that we wanted to do that we haven't been able to do. Okay. And, you know, that's where, you know, I got into the discussion about what we wanted to do to expand our college guidance area. You know, I talked more about what we wanted to do to help our young men who come here who need a little extra help. Maybe it's in counseling or tutoring or food or whatever it is, the guys who come, you know, because we want them to come. We want them to thrive. We want them to graduate. And so we just started having and we talked about a lot of things, you know, a lot of the other things that we want to do here. Um, And the conversation happened quickly and and it moved along. Um, and then um, when I needed to start telling my team. So I told Marcus that I've got to, I will, that we needed to start letting people know what was happening um, just so I could prepare for the day of the announcement. And so, you know, so he, so he was good with that. So I gathered a small group of, of our team and I said, listen, we're getting ready to announce the largest single gift that the school has ever had. And we needed to prepare for it. And so that was actually uh, the Monday of that week. So everything happened, John. It happened very, very quickly. Um, and so we started putting together. Had Alex Siege was involved. Mel was involved. David Pugh was involved. Um, you know, we had a, a, Christina uh, Cruz was involved. And our CFO was involved. So it really was a matter of saying, okay, we got to bring this together really quickly because we wanted that announcement to look good. There was no question there was going to be a lot of attention nationally to this gift. Um, And and there has been, there's been an enormous amount. And so we wanted that to look good. And what Marcus wanted was he wanted our faculty and staff to be there and he wanted all of our students to be there. And I love that. I love the idea because John, you remember when we've talked a lot about, you know, we need to help our guys understand 
that when they're here, they're here because of the generosity of other people. And we need them to understand what that is. And we need them to understand that at some point in time down the road, we're going to need them to help us out. You know, and so it really was a case we wanted the faculty and staff. He just wanted the community to be there. Um, you know, he, I, I invited our board as well, but he didn't want anybody else. He just wanted to be kind of the faculty, the staff, the students and, and our board. Um, and as we got closer to that day on Monday of, of that week, he goes on the Today Show yeah, and he announces yeah. something and he sends me a clip of it. Yeah. And I, I asked him, I said, you want me to tweet that out? And he said, no, no, no. He says, I want this to be the tease. He said, I want it to be so when people look back on it, they go, oh, that's oh, what yeah. he was talking about. Because he talked was. about the largest single tip ever. Um, and so so we kind of, you know, I could see where this, it was all coming together. And it was just, I mean, that last last couple of weeks, John, I didn't sleep at all. I was worried. <laughs> I, I mean, anything that I could possibly think could go wrong, I imagined it in my of head. Course. Um, and and the, the day of the event, I mean, poor Mel, Mel, Melissa Marty, I, I was just badgering her. But what about this? What about this? And finally, she sends me a text and I love that. She says, Tom, we got this. It's going to be fine. And then, um, you know, it, it just one thing led to another. You know, what was what was really amazing about this was, you know, it led with the faculty and staff. And I think to me, that was the most important thing is, is Marcus wanted to show the faculty and staff how important they were to him. You know, he had shared some stories about, you know, Pat Call and Irene Como. And so we were able to name the guidance center after them. So it's the, the Pat Call and Irene Como Center for College and Career Guidance. And then we have the Desmond Family Success Center. So those are two things that we've been talking about. You know, John, we've been talking about that the last you know, a couple of years and this gift allowed us to jumpstart it and make it happen. And it was just, it was a glorious day. And it, I mean, it continues. We were on NBC, the uh, their streaming platform, their national streaming platform a couple of days ago with a story. So, I mean, the, the publicity, the promotion, I'm getting calls from guys that I know in Texas and California who are hearing about this. And so we wanted, and, and my thanks to Christina Cruz and her, yeah her hard work to make sure, because what we wanted to make sure was that alums in other parts of the country who weren't hearing about it, like we were here in Miami, that they would see it and be able to be very proud of their alma mater. So an amazing, just an amazing couple of weeks. Oh, it was surreal. And the fact at a place where keeping secrets is almost impossible, this was Manhattan Project secret and, and the lid never came off. And, and so kudos to everybody involved with that. And I think it's great in an all boys school, uh, a male environment that, that women like Pat and Irene are being recognized. It, 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 it's a very important thing and a great decision by Mark to do that. And, and the Desmond family represents old school Columbus. So what a wonderful, wonderful naming uh opportunity by marcus yeah I, you know i mean it really was and and what was great was uh, pat call who who has been working with us this semester on a, on a part-time basis to help us in college guidance as it turns out um you know marcus called her just to say hey are you going to be there on thursday just you know you might might want to be there and talking to pat afterwards she she thought that because he had mentioned that you know he was also reaching out to the como family so she felt like we, they were, he was going to be honoring Irene in some way. Um, and for, for him to do this, you know, for he and uh, Bobby to do this for us was was just amazing. Again, you know, I think honoring our history, John, you you and I know how important our history is to us. Yeah. Um, you know, just a couple of weeks ago at our Hall of Fame ceremony, we honored Nancy Husted who was a longtime teacher here. And I think, you know, honoring our history, our heritage is so important to us. Um, and for us to be able to do that in front of the boys, in front of all the faculty and staff, it was it was it was a day to remember. I, I tell you, it was just an extraordinary day. And my thanks to Marcus, and Mario Suarez and everybody else who was a part of making this happen. It was amazing. Day of days and that no school announcement. It was like the liberation of Paris. It, it, it really was. <laughs> The kids went crazy. Those are the moments that, that are truly enjoyable. You mentioned uh, Mario Suarez. Talk about Mario's kind of the man behind the curtain to a certain extent with Mark. Talk about the role that, that Mario plays in this whole thing. I think, you know, Mario and Marcus are, you know, incredibly close friends. Yes. And, you know, I, I know how busy Marcus is. He's always he's running around the country. Um, and Mario is, is his best friend. 
and he and Marcus talk almost every day. And, you know, so sometimes when I really want to get something to Marcus, I'll make sure to copy Mario on it as well. And I know he'll talk to him about it as well. Um, and, and I, and so Mario has been, has been the guy, I mean, you know, he's certainly, you know, his name is going to be on the new building along with Marcus and, and Mario is just one of the nicest, you, you know, and he's just one of the nicest guys that you could ever ask for. And we're so blessed to have him as, as one of our, of our alumni, his son goes to school here as well. His wife, Sandra is just a lovely, lovely lady. So it's been great stuff all the way across the board. You know, they have been friends for forever. They're both wonderful guys, true explorers. And it's fitting that the next big event at Columbus High School is going to be the ribbon cutting for the Lamonis Suarez building. So talk a little bit about, uh, there's so many good things to talk about. This new building is an amazing accomplishment. Finished early through all kinds of challenges, pandemics and everything else. Yet here we are. So so bring us up to speed on where we stand with the new building, Tom. So the building is absolutely coming, you know, coming along so well. You're absolutely right. We're ahead of schedule um, and you know how difficult it is in the construction environment right now. And so we're actually ahead of schedule. So as I was walking into the building, in, into the Moss building today, I could see the K building is coming down. So we're actually beginning the, the uh, demolition process of the K building. And, you know, our the the Limonis and Suedis building is coming along very nicely. We should be teaching in there uh, on January 4th, which is just amazing. So so we're definitely ahead of schedule. Um, and then so the, the game plan from here is we'll be teaching in there on January 4th. The K building comes down over the next two weeks. So everything that we've been doing over the last couple of months and my thanks to my team for for making this all happen, because you know, a couple of months ago, we really we realized that we needed to accelerate the process. So over the two week period of time, when the built when all the when the guys are gone and we're not teaching, that's when we knew we needed to tear down the K building. So there's going to be a lot of trucks coming in and out. There's going to be a lot of noise, and we didn't want to disrupt our academic work here. So we decided we were going to do that. So we moved seven of our classes out of the K building. We got out of the K building early. Seven of the classes were being taught for the last three weeks in temporary quarters. We were in the chapel. We were in the physics labs, the library. The library. <laughs> um, and you know, thank you, to, you know, thank you to, to the teachers for for making sure that this happened. The academics continued, but we had to get it done, John, because the last two weeks is when we really needed to tear down the K building. So once the K building comes down, then that's when we're going to build a, a beautiful courtyard with lots of outdoor seating and lighting. And it's just going to be a great place for us to have events and activities. And so that courtyard will be, will be built starting in January through the end of March. And then April 27th and April 28th is going to be our dedication time for the new building. The Archbishop has agreed to be here. So we're going to do mass on the 28th. We're going to cut the ribbon on the 28th. The boys are going to be here. Easter is late next year, so we're doing it right after Easter. Um, and we're real excited. I mean, my thanks to all of the alumni who have been a part of building this building. Frank Villar um, and his team, yeah. you know, Frank, yeah. of course, an alum there. Tim yeah. Plummer, who's the head of our, our building and grounds committee. Um, Tim handed me a set of plans before I got here even. And he said, you know, one of the great things about this building is that almost all the subs are going to be alums. And he said, that means you can you can sleep well at night knowing that it's not just a job for these guys. It's the school that they love. Um, and that's absolutely the case. So many alums have been working on this and the subs have been have been going forward. Hank Haft is our uh, project manager. He's not a Columbus guy, but I think, John, we're going to have to make him an honorary member of the Brotherhood after this is over because he's been working like, you know, 30 hours a day, nine days a week to make this happen. And it's, I think you've it's earned that, Tom. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you just mentioned uh, our alums and, and in the middle of the CJ thing, uh, the Lamonis thing. Oh, yeah. By the way, two Columbus alumni returned to take over the University of Miami football program. How about that? Mario Cristobal, Alex Mirabal coming home. And if anyone can salvage the situation at UM football, it's Mario Cristobal aided and abetted by Alex Mirabal. 
I, it's just it's so exciting. I mean, there's such a buzz yeah. in the community over the last few weeks, and and it really was. It was CJ. It was Mario and Alex coming back. It was the uh, Marcus Lemonis gift. I mean, there's such a buzz. It seems like anywhere I go, if I've got a Columbus shirt on, somebody is stopping me and wants to talk to me about it. I mean, it's just it's just amazing uh, the buzz. So yeah, yeah, I'm uh, excited to see Mario come back, Alex back. Um, we're we're very excited. You know, and the fact that uh, Columbus alumni were involved in that whole situation as well behind the scenes. What we have done at Columbus High School uh, sends ripples across the nation. And, uh, you know, we're all very, very proud of that. And so when you came in, it's been quite two and a half years of, of nonstop activity. You've done many, many things very, very well in a lot of different places. Okay, different fields. Had you ever encountered anything like Columbus High School? No, no, nothing like this at all. I mean, the the extensive brotherhood. I mean, how how strongly aligned they are. You know, I the day that I was announced, you know, almost three years ago now. I guess it's been um, my LinkedIn feed just blew up, <laughs> and it was like all these people that I didn't know wanted to connect with me, and when I looked at their feed. They all had Christopher Columbus High School on it. And, you know, people don't put their high schools on it. Yeah. Christopher Columbus High School guys yeah. put their 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 um, their link on it to their high school. And, you know, John, the thing that I that I love about there's so many things I love about Columbus. You know, Carrie and I are so glad to be a part of this this wonderful family. But what Columbus guys do, you know, they'll come to my office. They'll they'll say, hey, I've got an idea for something. You might want to think about doing this. And then they add those magical words, how can I help? And I think that's the difference from a guy in my chair who, you know, who really wants to do different things and make good things happen here. You know, I'm, I'm sitting on Brother Kevin's you know, shoulder, certainly, and all the amazing things that he's done here. But it's the alumni who not only say, why don't you think about this, but how can I help? And that makes such a huge difference. You know, I've seen a lot of schools around the country and you don't see high schools like this. You hope your kid, when he goes to college, has a great connective network like Columbus has. You hope they get it at a college level. But when they get it at a high school level, that's amazing. And it's magic. You know, and, and across the city, across the country, it's like six degrees of separation. Everywhere you turn is a Columbus guy. And, and you have been fortunate enough to have a great team surrounding you with the administration and the school board. So why don't you talk about, you know, the people that, you know, you're only as good as your team. Right. And, and you've got a hell of a team. Oh, it, absolutely. I mean, you know, you know, starting with David Pugh as our principal, you know, I mean, what an amazing guy. I mean, in terms of how hard he works here, yeah. his heart, you know, where he's at for our students. I mean, it starts with, with David as our principal and the rest of the administrative team that we have, you know, Anna as our CFO, um, you know, Chris McKeon as our athletic director, Juan and Pedro, um, Bob Linforce, Terry Shomat. I mean, you know, it's just, it's an amazing team. Alex Trujillo, yeah. you know, doing double duty as a dean of students, as well as, um, our defensive coordinator on the football team. So, you know, it's, it's an amazing group and, and the school board, I mean, the school board, you know, those meetings are always so much fun because we were able to talk about different things, but, you know, John, where the school board really, you know, plays a great role for us is I know I can always pick up the phone and that's really what I do is, you know, oftentimes when I've got something that I need to, to talk to Adrian or Mick or, you know, or John Adams or Lou, um, you know, Danny Bray. I mean, there's so many of these great guys, Jose Moss, I'm able to pick up the phone and these guys will all take my calls. Um, you know, it's great to have Annie Sigley on the board, Pat Call. I think, you know, it's, we've got such a great group of of people and they're so committed and you know at their heart what it's always about is how do we help the school how do we help our guys and then how do we drive forward what do we do to help the guys in the future and i think that's the thing that i love about it and you know getting back to you know marcus's gift you know the the the, the guidance you know what we're doing guidance what we're going to do with the success center is going to touch all of our students you know not just now but into the future as well i mean this is a gift that will help us for years and years and years in the future. And our alums are always out there and they're always at, uh, you know, trying to help us. So many, somebody, one time I was laughing at one of our alums, I said, you know, we're probably three calls away from the Pope. 
I, if I needed to get to New York, to talk to Francis. And, and the guy says, no, 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 no. We got this cardinal that we know of up in New York. So we're really two calls away from the Pope. So it's like, you know, how do you how do you not like that? You know? Oh, my Lord. It's so true. We're, we're, we're just a phone call away from presidents and governors and senators, uh, congressmen. It's it's a phenomenal thing. Um, what over two and a half years, what has pleasantly surprised you the most about Columbus and the experience there? I, I think, you know, there, there are a lot, you know, things that, that have certainly, you know, surprised me. And I, and I think, you know, there's no way you can ever anticipate how deep the brotherhood is and how helpful the brotherhood is until you're here. You know, I, I before I started, um, you know, when I was going through the interview process, we had, we had dinner at Mick's house um, and a number of the board members were there. Um, and it was, it, you know, you hear the stories, but then you come here um, and then you're surprised at, again, how deep the brotherhood is and how, how connected the brotherhood is. You know, the other thing is, is our students, you know, just what great questions. You know, I love to, you know, go into Kevin Cortezone's class, you know, a couple of times a year. And I'm always amazed at the questions that I get. They're always such good questions. They're probing questions. You know, and I look at, you know, the Silver Knights that we do every year that Sylvie Galvez, you know, runs with and, you know, the projects that our guys do. I mean, one of them last year, I'm, I'm amazed that he didn't win. I mean, he was doing stuff in India. I mean, yeah. and our guys are doing great things. You know, they're, they're doing things here locally. They're doing things in, in, you know, the Dominican Republic. They're doing things in India. So I think, you know, the other thing, John, is just how engaged and how smart and how mature our young guys are. Yeah, they do stupid things. You know it is. I mean, you know, it, it happens. Yeah. But the, I mean, one day I was sitting here in my office and I just kept watching. It was late in the afternoon. These guys just keep going back and forth and back and forth and back and forth by my office. Finally, I was like, okay, what are you guys doing here? And they were on a project for a nonprofit here in, in uh, Miami that needed baby bottles and diapers. And they were bringing baby bottles and diapers and they were taking them from a car into one of the classrooms and they then were going to be taking them over to the to the nonprofit and talking to the folks at the nonprofit later. It was the largest single gift ever that they got of baby bottles and diapers. And that was because our guys jumped in and said, yep, we're going to do that. And that's the thing that's amazing. Our guys are, you know, they, they want to help. They want to be a part of the community. And, and that's the reason whenever I talk to, you know, deans of admission of colleges around the country, I always tell them, you want our guys because they're going to be good in the classroom. They're going to be good in the dorms. They're going to be good on your campus. They're going to be leaders. No, they're not going to be a student body president when they come there as freshmen, but they're going to be guys who are going to do good things on your campus. And that's the one thing I always try and tell, you know, friends of mine in that, in that area that you want our guys. Yes, because, you know, yes, our kids can be buffoons. They're boys, yeah. but at heart, they are truly, truly good people. And I think the term Marist is is used quite a bit. Yeah, I think our kids are Marist. And now that you've been here a while, what, what does Marist mean to, to you, Tom? I, I mean, you know, I think of the Marist brothers that I've gotten to know here. Um, you know, the, the, the number of them that work here and, you know, it, Marist means humility. It means hard work. It means caring for those who are less fortunate than us. Um, you, you know, the, the Marist brothers are an amazing group of men that, that I'm just, I, I'm overwhelmed when I talk to them about how hard they work. You know, I, I, you know, you can go through the names of all of them that work here and they work so hard and they work so diligently and their heart is in the right place trying to help our guys, help our students, help our alumni any way that they can. I know anytime I need to, I can pick up the phone and any one of the, the Marist brothers are going to help me on anything that I need. It's truly an amazing thing. And I think you'll see us continue to talk more about that in uh, our marketing as we go forward, because I think that's one of those things that's a true differentiator for us. Yes, we're Catholic. We're all boys. And our yeah. focus is to be the best Catholic all boys high school in America. That's where we're driving toward. But really, the whole notion of Marist and what it means, it means something a little bit. Different. I mean, what does Marist mean to you, John? I think it's funny. When I was in school, Tom, uh, no one ever talked about March and Champagne. Didn't talk about it. Uh, that came later, uh, well into the probably the 90s. Um, but it was ingrained in us without knowing anything about Marshland. We were taught that you serve a greater good, that 
you know, you are there to help others and to never forget who helped you. And I think being Marist to me is recognize, recognizing we all stand on the shoulders yeah. of giants and what they did for us, it is up to us to give to the next generation. And, and I think uh, a Columbus guy is the type of guy you can count on when the chips are down. You know, absolutely. When yeah. Things get tough. Yeah, everybody wants to be on the bandwagon when things are going well. But when times are tough and, and you need somebody in the clutch, Columbus guys come through. And I think that's the Maris values that were instilled in us all those years ago and continue forward. You help the least fortunate. You know, you, when somebody's down, you pick them up and you stay positive. And you never, ever forget that um, one day that young man could be, you know, on the profit. He could be the CEO of Camping World. And you never know what's going to come back. And, and, and I think that's one thing. That's the bond of the brotherhood. Yeah. You, you always remember where you came from because you never know what's going to happen down the road. Mike Marinelli had a great line. He said that day when we had all the, 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 the students there, he said, the next Marcus Limonis is probably out there. And he, yeah. you're right. You know, it, it probably was. I mean, I, I think about, you know, we, we have a program, a fund that we call the Caring Hearts Fund. Yeah. And it started yeah. because one day, not long after I got here, I was in the cafeteria and I, I'm pretty sure it was Fred Foyo. I watched him reach it. A young man came up to talk to him about something. Fred reached into his pocket, gave him some cash. The young man didn't put the cash back in his pocket. He walked over to the to the cafeteria line and he paid for his lunch with the money that that Fred gave him. And I remember just thinking to myself, what is going on here? And so I went to talk to Fred and he said, well, you know, we got to help out these guys. So I said, are other people doing this? He said, yeah, other people help as well. And that was the birth of the Caring Hearts Fund here. You know, Ernie Castro has been hugely helpful with that. You He's know, a good man. Yeah. really pushing that out there. But the Carry Hearts Fund is an outgrowth of watching something that was so marist. It was so marist of Fred and the other teachers, John, I'm sure you did it as well, and others as well, who would reach into their pockets. And, you know, what we're able to do now with the Caring Hearts Fund is, is help our guys, you know, with breakfast and lunch, whatever they need help with, that's what we're going to do. But that's the, just the most marist thing in the world. That's my favorite cause at Columbus High School, no doubt Thank about you. it. Because yeah. what's great about Columbus, talk about being Marist, you know, we are not elitist. You know, we are open to everyone. And there's nothing better than walking into our cafeteria and see the son of a billionaire sitting next to the son uh, of someone who, you know, is a blue collar worker. And it yeah. doesn't matter what your father does. It doesn't matter your background. You can be the star football player sitting next to a drama kid. That is also an aspect of Maris. We're all equal. We're all one. We're all brothers. And they come in as ninth graders, totally separate kind of kids, very cliquish, you know, Epiphany, St. Teresa, whatever. And by the time they're sophomores, they're explorers and then they're explorers for life. And and caring hearts means a lot to to all of us, Tom, no doubt. It, 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 I'm, I'm just very blessed that, that we're able to make this happen here. Yes, it, it, it's a great thing. Now, this time about two years ago, we're celebrating a state championship in football, uh, which was huge, you know, and, and that was a special moment. And then a couple months later, everything changed. Yeah. And yet we've worked our way back. Talk about the challenge. We, you know, we all went through it of, of keeping the school going and the marriage spirit alive and the kids engaged through that tough break to get back to where we are now, which is fantastic. I mean, the team here just did such an amazing job. You know, the administrative team, you know, we were we were doing Zoom sessions every day from our houses while we were trying to work our way through this. It was over, yeah. you know, it was over Easter break. Um, and, you know, I remember the last thing that we did on campus was you did a uh, like a lunch and learn. In, yeah, with the alumni. Yeah. yeah. Mott's conference room. And we were so happy. It was such a great day. Yeah. Well, let's do that again. Well, that didn't yeah. happen. Not so but, much. You know, the, 
the team did such a great job. You know, then, you know, our alumni jumped in because we knew we needed some help on the technology side that we were going to have to, you know, source and buy a lot of technology. And so, you know, JB Alamon and Mike Ortiz and Eddie yeah. Martinez jumped in to help us out there. Um, and it really, we, I mean, we spent a lot of money on technology, um, but it, it enabled us to do it. Our faculty and staff, you know, they jumped in as well. And they, they learned new things. We all got new words that we didn't know, you know, two years ago that we're able to do, but we're able to get our way through this. And I think, you know, when you look at other schools, you know, I, I, you know, other schools struggled with it a little bit. Our people jumped in and they said, we're going to make this happen. We're going to figure this thing out. And we did. And we did. And, you know, we've been, you know, we've been careful, you know, during the course of the last, you know, the last couple of years, you know, we, we, we wore masks for a while and then we went masks optional a few weeks ago. Um, but I, I feel like we're on the right path. You know, again, David Pugh can't say enough about him and the rest of the administrative team and all the work that they've done to get us to where we are today. I think it's it's been amazing. Um, but, you know, we got to be careful, obviously, yeah. but we're going to we're going to keep driving forward. And it's great to have that energy back on campus. You know, oh, it, it is. really is. You forgot, you know, you forgot during that time period how much electricity is on that campus. And there's always something happening. And that's what makes it fun. It is. And, you know, what I love is, you know, I'll be walking around the campus at four o'clock, four thirty, and there'll be guys, you know, working on projects. They'll be playing, you know, you know, game, some game. They'll be working on a research project together. And they're they're here. They're here for a long period of time. And I yeah. think that, you know, one of the things that's wonderful about this school is that we want them to be here. We want them to stay, um, you know, during the summers. You know, we've got there's always something going on. CCNN is always here during the summertime. Um, this year, actually, we're this coming summer, uh, Frank Azor, who's gonna be uh, Columbus Connects on February 23rd, yes. yeah. he approached me, he said, hey, I'd like to do a speaker series targeted at our, our students. So this summer, and we're still working through the details on this, but this summer, what he's gonna do, it's gonna be all around gaming. Uh, Frank, Frank is the uh, chief uh, gaming architect for AMD. He was the founder of Alienware. And so he's gonna do a, okay. a speaker series, a mini speaker series. We're gonna do it inside the new building, uh, inside our lecture hall there. And it's gonna be all targeted around gaming. And it's gonna start with, he's gonna show the launch of a game and he's gonna go backwards from there, bringing in guest speakers. Some will come here to Miami, some will zoom in, um, but we'll bring in somebody who's in the finance area of a gaming company. Somebody's a game designer, somebody you know who, um, you know, who who's on the marketing side all the way through basically saying, this is how we launched the game and how did we get to that point? And it's going to be so much fun. So we're going to do it during the summer. Pete Marty and Andrew Harriman are kind of running with this. Um, and we felt summer was the best time to do something like this because we could then make sure that there wasn't a conflict with any sports or activities or anything else. But, you know, again, the alumni, Frank, you know, making sure that that's going to happen. But our guys, they're going to be here this summer. I know they're going to they're going to want to participate in this. No, that's fantastic. And once again, the fact that there's 50 some odd alumni teachers at school, which is a unique situation in itself, that lends itself yeah. to the communication generation to generation. And it's something we all enjoy. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, I was thinking of something we were talking about earlier. Columbus has a tremendous reputation athletically, but, but, but we're equally accomplished academically. For every Dave Dunn, there's a Sylvie Galvez. Yep. For every Joe Weber, there's an Aaron McGrath. There is something now at Columbus, literally for every single kid. That did not exist when I went to school there. The diversity, the opportunities at Columbus High School now are more than anybody would have ever imagined. Yeah, and I and I, you know, tip of the hat to our team for making that happen because it seems like whenever you know a student wants to do something different you know they can go to dave and you know a couple of students are interested we'll find a moderator for it and we'll have a club i love this one of my parents called um and want to know if we had a fencing club here <laughs> imagine that uh, you know, our, our young explorers uh, running around with sabers in their uh, hand that but might you know be what a... we're probably going to do that you know because his son's going to be coming to us next year so you know what we'll probably have a fencing club the cooking club you know the aviation oh. club that tom burns started i mean it's oh, just my amazing Lord. The cooking club is the coolest club 
yeah. at Columbus to see our guys taking pride in preparing a souffle. I mean, where else can that happen? Exactly. Exactly. And that's that's what you got to love when you when you're able to see those kind of things happening. You know, and, and I think that is something we we've worked very, very hard at. And and I know we're going to continue to work hard at it and to let people know we are not a stereotypical all boys sports high school. We're anything but actually. Yes, that's a huge component. But if you want to do something at Columbus High School, you can do it. No yeah. question. And I think, you know, when Mike is out there, Mike Marinelli, when he's out there talking to prospective parents, um, I think that's one of the, the things that he tries to make sure that they understand that this is a very unique environment here. And it's all about helping those young men take that next step in their life. And it's hard to, you know, when you're talking to somebody who's an eighth grader or a parent of an eighth grader, you're going, but, you know, not too far down the road, you're going to be thinking about college. And that next step of your life in Columbus is going to prepare you. I always like to tell the parents, the values come from our parents. It comes from the dinner table. Our job is to reinforce those values. But everything else, I mean, in terms of getting ready for that right fit college, the right next step in their life, whatever that is, that's what Columbus is all about. That's what makes this place so special. Yeah, we always say we don't want our students to go to college. We want our students to go to the college of their choice. Right. And and, and that that is what we do and we do very well and so let me ask you this tom because you know running a school running a business is like a, a chess match you know you have to stay a couple moves ahead and getting to the top is one thing staying on top yeah. is another because imitation is the sincerest form of flattery schools right. all over dade county are imitating columbus high school so right. looking ahead tom the next three five years uh what do you envision to keep us on the top on top and keep us moving forward what are your goals and, and you're right i think you know for you know when you look at like our our internship externship program that we've okay. got you know i mean you know that's a that's a great program colleen does a magnificent job colleen anderson does a great yeah. job on that program but other schools are now starting to replicate that so for me it is about looking at you know the college guidance area how do we expand that you know the success center how do we expand that and then you know once we get the new building built we need to take a look at our master plan and say okay let's take a deep let's take a breath and then yeah. let's look at our master plan and say okay what's next what do we what's the next project that we want to take on but it is about looking at our guys and saying how can we help them take that next step and, and you know the, what we're going to do in the guidance center i think it is a you know is a great example of that you know i'd love to you know parking parking is always an issue here you know <laughs> I'd, I'd love to do uh, something there i'd love to get more seats well, at our football stadium yeah you know we've got some things at baseball that we want to that we want to make some changes there you know the scoreboard looks great now you know, the blue monster looks great. Yeah. I think you know, we've got some more things that we want to do. So it's always a matter of looking at it, you know, listening, you know, listening clearly to your audience and then trying to stay one step ahead of finding. And, and it is about making sure that we're out there and, and making sure colleges are aware of us. You know, you know, we know us, certainly. But, you know, it is about making sure that colleges and universities out there that right now are not necessarily, you know, uh, you know, bringing in large numbers of our guys, um, making sure that they do it. I mean, a couple of years ago, I, I used to love to tell people, we had nine guys at Johns Hopkins, you know? So, you know, anytime anybody would say, well, you're, a, you know, you're really a sports school. Go, yeah, I don't think so. Yeah. I think, I think the other day we had, I think four or five guys got into the university of Notre Dame. Um, we had two of our guys get the Questbridge scholarship, which is an amazing scholarship. One's going yes. to Notre Dame, one's yes. going to Boston college. Brian's going to uh, Boston college. I mean, these are the things that we need to continue to look at. I mean, you know, we've, we've started a new program with a uh, national merit scholarship. We'd like to see more guys get into, to be finalists. So it is always about what can we do? to improve the educational outcomes at our school. I think that's always the thing that's, you know, top of my list. And, and how can we find ways to move us along, you know, to be the best? I think, you know, I always like to look at our aspirational schools. We've got, you know, a group of aspirational schools that we look at across the country. What are they doing over there? You know, what are they doing at Marist Jesuit? in in in, uh, um, in denver you know what saint ed's in cleveland doing you know all oh, those kind of schools and, and basically say okay let's not you know we know who our competitive set is but who are our aspirational schools and what are they doing 
and how can we do it better? That's where the mentorship program comes in, really expanding the mentorship program that we've got that RJ and Danny are working on right now. You know, continuing to expand the internship and externship programs so our college guys, when they come back, can take advantage of it. But we want the externship to be for all of our students to take at least one externship. So what we're here. So there's there's an unending series of things that we can do and we need to do, but it is about always trying to stay ahead of the game, John. You're absolutely right. Yes, and um, we're very, very proud of what we've done over the last couple of years, and and we're very blessed to have you seamlessly fit into the Columbus family. And you know, you seem to have. I think you were just drinking the Kool Aid right there, Tom. You know, because, <laughs> always, always, you always got the brand. You know, <laughs> you know, you're all in. And so, um, as we go into Christmas, it's it's been. A, a phenomenal run. Let's keep it going. And so I'm going to allow you to sign off uh, with a Christmas New Year's wish to everyone. And so Explore Nation, uh, I've enjoyed this episode of Looking Back with Linsky. Tom's a dear friend, does a tremendous job at Columbus. And so I will see you guys again next year. So Tom, Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. Why don't you sign us out for this year? You bet. John, thanks so much for, for bringing me on to do this. Thanks for all that you're doing here for our Columbus family. And yeah, this has been an amazing uh, conclusion to our year. I'm really excited about 2022 and all the things that are going to continue to happen here. You know, my best wishes to the, to the Columbus family, a Merry Christmas, a Happy New Year. Keep an eye on all the events that we've got coming up because there's going to be lots of opportunities for us to get together, have some fun and enjoy together. And it'll be a great 2022. Again, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year to everybody out there. John, thanks so much. Merry Christmas to you as well, my friend. Thank you, Tom. Merry Christmas and Adelante, Explorer Nation. Adelante.